Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Chem Connection that provides you with regulatory news in between ChemCon conferences. Later in this episode we will focus on developments in the USA and poison center notification in Europe. But first we will connect with Laurence Hofstadt from the European Chemicals Agency. Hi Laurence. Hello Thiert. Laurence, can you share some implementation actions from the second REACH review with us? Well, the REACH Evaluation Joint Action Plan uh, we published together with the Commission is our commitment to address all substances. This means that ECA will screen all substances registered by 2018 to know whether the quality of the data submitted meets the REACH requirements. If not, we will do compliance check to obtain more data because any data gap may prevent us from concluding whether or not the substance needs further regulatory actions to protect us and the environment. To reach our targets, uh, we have already uh, increased the percentage of check dossiers from 5 to 20 percent of all registration dossiers we received. Um, and this corresponds to uh, overall thir checking 30% of all registered substances. Also, we needed to increase the overall efficiency of our evaluation processes. We already simplified the drafting of our decisions and we are now streamlining the decision-making process, mainly for dossier evaluation but also for substance evaluation. In parallel, the action plan also identified the other actors which have their roles to play. The European Commission is preparing to amend the annexes relevant to the compliance checks. The enforcement authorities need to harmonize their actions across Europe. And of course, companies need to take on the compliance challenge. And based on the um, improved knowledge on their substances, companies will be able to improve their safety data sheet and share this knowledge through the supply chain. And this will improve the safe use of substances. Talking about improvements, the quality and workability of extended safety data sheets are crucial for the success of REACH. Can you tell us more about the developments in that area? Yes, Tiert. Um, our aim is to improve the quality of safety data sheets, exposure scenarios and safe use advice, and also to tailor the advice to the needs of the users. Not just for REACH compliance, but also for legislations covering occupational safety and health or the environment. To improve the workability and quality of the extended sa uh, safety data sheets, we organized a second workshop with the Commission, where we, uh, where we discussed um, which of the already identified practical solutions should be further developed. And the consensus so far has been that industry and authorities, EU or national, need to further invest in the existing tools, such as the use maps or phrase library. And also, they need to develop new ones, for example, to implement the safe use of mixtures. We learned a lot and uh, we expect to discuss the next step in November. Thank you for sharing these updates. At Chemcon the Americas, we have scheduled a complete afternoon on supply chain communication issues, with lots of business experiences on global hazard communication and risk-based safe use. From Helsinki, let's move to Washington to ask Robert Helminiak from SOCMA to share some key developments in the US. Hello, Robert. Hey, Jared. Thanks for having me. Robert, what are the major issues in relation to chemical control legislation and trade aspects? A couple of the major issues that are facing industry right now are TSCA. TSCA implementation is very important to our industry, and specifically, we're concerned about the amount of time that it's taking to approve new chemicals and review uh, low volume exemptions. Um, right now, EPA is not meeting their statutory guidelines, but we have seen them staff up in 2019 and we're optimistic that they are moving in the right direction. Uh, the other issue you suggested, uh, trade, that's also a major concern for us. Uh, the China tariffs are very challenging for the chemicals industry. That's because a lot of the inputs and raw materials that we use in the manufacturing process come from China and really exclusively come from China. There is really no alternative sourcing. So that has created a ripple up and down the value chain. Indeed, a very challenging topic, which will be covered in our Greater China Seminar in Philadelphia, where regulatory affairs managers can relay the updates on the regulatory framework in China with these trade issues. And it is a topic with consequences not only for product stewardship directors, this goes all the way to the CEO level. Absolutely, and that's why we're doing SACMA Week this year. SACMA Week is SACMA's renewed annual conference. That's going to be December 4th through 6th in New Orleans. And the audience for that is really 
you know, everyone from CEOs to EHS people, to government relations people, to sales and procurement people. There's really something there for everyone because we're trying to help address these major issues for the industry like China tariffs. Um, you know, another issue that we're facing that's extremely challenging is the Chemical Facilities Anti-Terrorism Standards. That's the legislation that authorizes the Department of Homeland Security to create a program for security for chemical facilities. That program expires in April of 2020, and right now we are working with Congress as well as DHS to get that program renewed. Uh, we're expecting significant updates at the end of this year and the beginning of next year. Thank you, Robert. Also, CFEDS will be part of our Philadelphia program. You will have the opportunity to learn a lot more on American developments during our Monday pre-conference program, with our free Tosca CDR rule workshop and our seminar on the amended Tosca as well as our seminar on the hazardous chemicals information schemes. The latter will include topics like CFATs, but also the American EPCRA Tier 2 and Toxic Release Inventory program, as well as the European Poison Center notifications. For the latest news on the Poison Center notifications, we will once again connect to Helsinki, this time to Tiago Pedrosa from the European Chemicals Agency. Hi Tiago! Hi Tiered! As you know, we have successfully launched the Poison Center notification portal and we are very pleased to see that companies are actively using it. Now we are working together with industry on the automation of the notifications with the so-called system-to-system connection. We expect to have it available by the end of October. Important to mention, the European Commission is adopting a delegated act that includes changes to Annex 8 of CLP. These will change the first compliance date for reporting mixtures for consumer use by one year to the 1st of January 2021, which is also the compliance date for reporting mixtures for professional uses. We expect the amendment to be published later this year. This postponement will give time to address some of the concerns from national authorities and stakeholders, such as with finding out the exact composition of products in cases of complex supply chains or when the composition is defined at the point of sale, as in the case with paints, for example. This actually means that we expect another amendment of Annex 8 by mid-2020, and we will need to update the guidance accordingly. Great to see that things are moving forward. Does the postponement mean that companies have more time to prepare? Yes, but we strongly advise companies to get familiar with the notification process already now and to start their preparations to avoid any last-minute surprises. They can use the notification portal or the system-to-system -system connection. Once companies start using the tools, they will be able to provide valuable feedback to further improve them and the advice we give to the companies. So no time to lose. Any other regulatory news? Yes, as a matter of fact. The European Commission recently published an implementing regulation on the end of the phase-in period for REACH. The transitional regime for registering phase-in chemicals ended on the 31st May 2018. But there was still the need to clarify certain aspects. For example, the implementing regulation clarified that after the 31st December 2019, this is by the end of this year, companies will need to calculate their volumes per calendar year. It also clarifies that companies that plan to register a substance after 2019 can no longer rely on their pre-registration and will need to submit an inquiry to ECHA to get information on the registrants and start on the other registrants and start data sharing negotiations. And finally, it confirmed that phasing substances registered at the lowest tonnage band, so between 1 and 10 tons per year, and that do not meet the criteria listed in Annex 3 of REACH will continue to benefit from less strict information requirements. By the way, it is also good to keep in mind that impl the implementing regulation on dossier updates is expected next year. This will further clarify update obligations, including the timeframes. Tiago, thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to benefit from our early bird discount for Philadelphia. And since it's called ChemCon the Americas, it will have an in-depth focus on Latin America as well. More on this in our next Chem Connection.